Betty, and I'll be talking about sending and receiving direct secure messages. Today, we will cover what is included in a summary of care document, how you can change the default summary of care configuration, how to send, receive, and reconcile direct secure messages, and how to remove a direct secure message if it is accidentally linked to the wrong patient's chart. By default, the summary of care contains patient demographics, allergies, care plans, encounters, functional status assessment, immunizations, labs, medication history, orders, payers, problem list, referrals, social history, and vital signs. The summary of care document can also contain confidential diagnoses and orders. However, this is not included in the document by default. You can change these practice-wide defaults by going into the configuration menu and selecting summary of care record. You can select which sections to include or omit by using the summary of care record configuration tool. You can also include confidential diagnoses and orders if you wish. When you run the summary of care record report, it will only include the sections your practice has chosen. Once DSM is enabled for your practice, you will be able to send direct secure messages. To send a summary of care record to a specialist, another pediatrician, or another healthcare provider, first open the patient's chart. Select summary of care record from the reports menu. On the reports criteria screen, you need to indicate whether you are creating the record for a referral or a transition of care. You may also select a specific encounter and limit the record you send to information from, from that particular encounter. Choose the specific referral order from the selection pull down menu. If you select a specific referral and counter date from the drop down menu, the summary of care record will be limited to procedures, orders, and vitals for that given date. Optionally, you can deselect the limited to the referral and counter checkbox, and the summary of care report will generate the patient's complete CCDA with all available patient information. Select the Send via Direct Secure Messaging radio button and then click the Send To button. Enter the healthcare provider's direct address, not their email address, in the To field. You may also search by provider or practice name. You will see more results here if a user at your practice is registered with the Direct Trust Network. PCC EHR also displays search results from contacts your practice has entered into PCC's Professional Contact Manager. Those results will appear at the top of your search. If you know the person's direct secure message address, you can type it in, you can search first name, last name, you can try the name of the organization. You can also search by zip code. Just be aware that the five digits from the zip code are treated as a string of numbers and may match up with a phone number or a street address that has the same number. You may, wish to start, you may wish to store direct addresses for organizations you frequently need to message in the PCC's Professional Contacts Manager, which can be found under the Tools menu. There's a field for Direct Address. Finally, enter a subject and additional message text for your direct secure message. You can also attach files or documents from your workstation or from the patient's chart. When you are finished, click Send to send the message along with the patient's care record and any attachments. Use the attach document button to attach any documents in PCC EHR that are associated with the patient. Select a document from the recent documents list or a document category and click attach. The document will appear under the list of attachments with its title and size. You may send up to 50 megabytes or 5,000 kilobytes, including the message and any attachments. If you try to send a message that is too big, you will be prompted to remove attachments. You can use the attach file button to attach any file from your workstation to the message. The file appears under the list of attachments with its name and size. Before you send the message, you have the option to remove any attachments you may have selected. You can remove an attachment before sending by clicking the remove button. Once your practice has activated direct secure messaging, other medical organizations can send DSNs to users at your practice. Those messages can include transition of care, CCDA attachments, and other documents. When a DSM arrives, it will appear on the messaging queue. Anyone in the practice with permission to view the messaging queue can see incoming direct secure messages. They do not have to have a direct secure message address. Access to view the messaging queue is configured under roles in user administration. Double click on a message to review it and associate it with a patient chart. This is similar to the process for importing electronic lab results. You can view the message information, including patient name, birth date, and message details if available. You can view PDF attachments and optionally save any attachments to your workstation. 
Use the panel on the right to associate the message with a patient's chart. In most cases, PCCEHR does the work for you and suggests a matching patient. You can also search for any patient. Once you have located the patient, click Select to place the DSM into the patient's chart. After you click Select, PCCEHR will open the DSM as it appears in the patient chart. You will be able to see the full message details and any attachments. You also have the option of writing your own summary of the contents of the DSM once it has been placed in the patient's chart. Custom summaries appear in place of the message subject in the patient's visit history. You can edit the summary of a direct secure message at any time. After a direct secure message is placed in the patient's chart, you can review it as you would a chart note or phone note. As you review a message, you can click to open message attachments and create and complete tasks. For example, you can click view to view a CCDA document or other attachment. You can create tasks for users so they can follow up on the message. Once the message is linked to the patient's chart, you can create a task for another user to follow up on the message. For example, you could create a task for the provider to reconcile and import any allergies and medications for this patient with the patient's chart. If a direct secure message includes a transition of care document in CCDA format, you can import problems, medication allergies, and medications from the CCDA document into the patient's chart record. Anyone in the practice with permission for reconciliation can reconcile attached CCDAs with the patient's chart. They do not have to have a direct secure message address. Permission for reconciliation is configured under roles in user administration. When you see an incoming CCDA in a direct secure message, you can click reconcile to review and import patient data. On the reconciliation import screen, you will see three sections, problems, medication allergies, and medications. In each section, you will see both the information in the CCDA and the information that is already in the patient's chart in PCC EHR. When you want to import information, select it in the add to EHR column. After you have reviewed each section and selected any items you wish to add to the patient's chart, click next. On the Reconciliation, Review, and Save screen, you can review what the final result of the patient's record will be. You will see what the patient's new problem list, PCC ERX allergies, and medication history will display after the import is complete. You can click Edit and modify the items on these lists before saving. If you have a duplicate entry, for example, you may want to edit and combine notes or delete them. Our patient Dino may no longer have an obstructed nasolacrimal duct, so I could edit here to change the status from active to inactive. Click Save to save your changes and import the data. You can also click Cancel to close the CCDA without making any changes to the patient's chart. PCC EHR tracks when a user clicks the Reconcile button, whether or not they decided to import data into the chart. You will see a last reconciled attribution on the direct secure message as well as in the patient's visit history. You can revisit the message and choose to reconcile the CCDA data with the patient chart again at any time. After you reconcile and import medications and medication allergies from a CCDA, they are added to the patient's chart record as free text. After three minutes, they are synced with PCC ERX. After the record has synced, you should head into PCC ERX to review the imported entries. If ERX was not able to make a match to an existing entry in the database due to the format from the other organization, you will see a pill bottle with a question mark indicating that this has been imported as free text, medication, or allergy. In order to ensure that these medications or allergies participate in safety checking, you will want to manually add an equivalent entry in either allergies or medication history and delete the imported entry. You can add comments in both sections in PCC ERX to indicate where these entries originate from. If you accidentally attach a direct secure message to the wrong chart, you can unattach it and send it back to the message queue. From the visit history, double click to open a direct secure message. This is different from deleting the DSM from the messaging queue. At this point, you've already associated the message with the patient. While viewing the direct secure message, select remove direct secure message from the edit menu and then click remove. You will see a confirmation to remove the DSM. Click remove again. The direct secure message will appear back in the messaging queue where you can import it into the correct patient's chart. If your practice reviewed the DSM and reconciled problems, medication allergies, or medications, they will not be removed by removing the DSM from the patient's chart. If the practice receives a DSM for a patient that is not in your practice, you may want to delete the message from the messaging queue. From the messaging queue, double click on the message to open it. 
click delete message to remove the message from the queue. Permission to delete a DSM is configured under roles in user administration. And that completes the section of our training.